Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well today. Today, what I'd like to do is take, I'd like to take a deep, deeper dive into the concept of a tricyclic antidepressant, specifically talk about the chemical structure of the two major categories of tricyclic antidepressants. There are other ways of categorizing these agents, but these uh, tend to be much more intuitive for me and helpful for understanding some of the side effects profiles of the agents that exist within these categories. So tricyclic antidepressants have been around for quite some time. They've been around since the early to mid 1950s and actually came out of research from the 1930s into polycyclic compounds that were used to develop the first antihistamine agents that were used in the perioperative environment to treat perioperative nausea and vomiting. Uh, the first of which, uh, as it came out in the 1930s, was diphenhydramine or Benadryl, uh, followed by uh, promethazine or uh, phenergan. And then another agent that, that came out a little later on uh, was, uh, uh, was actually the very first of the so-called antipsychotic agents, uh, Thorazine. And this particular agent, uh, while it did have some antihistamine properties, it also was noted to have antipsychotic properties. And that kind of opened the door to an entire uh, zeitgeist change in the area of, of psychiatry and actually uh, opened the door to developing new agents that could help in part treat the signs and symptoms of psychosis, at least in the terms of uh, in terms of drugs like Thorazine, um, treating some of the negative symptoms of psychosis. Now, following that, another drug was another drug came out called em Emipramine that uh, was chemically similar and uh, thought to have some of the same properties as uh, Thorazine. However, when Emipramine was given to patients, it actually caused some people to develop psychosis or rather psychosis, it, it, it worsened their psychosis or the psychotic dimension of their mania. And so these were people that would by today would be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, the, this particular drug, amipramine, made them more prone to developing mania. But on the other hand, it seemed to improve some of the signs and symptoms that people that were, uh, that were, uh, that depressed people were experiencing and it was uh, quickly realized that this agent had antidepressant properties and so it wasn't really an effective antipsychotic at all but rather could be used as an antidepressant and this was the first of the so-called tricyclic antidepressants or the TCA is amipramine. Um, so amipramine like all TCAs, has the basic chemical structure. It looks a lot, well, kind of looks like this. And so what you have is you have these three rings that that's what we call the tricyclic nature. And all TCAs have this basic structure in them. And so what you have here is you have two benzene rings or aromatic rings that are bound to an azepine ring. And then you have a nitrogen down here at the bottom of the azepine ring. You have a little carbon bridge that is then attached to an amine group at the end. And this particular, uh, this particular molecule is actually amipramine. And amipramine is an example of what we call a tertiary amine tricyclic antidepressant. And the reason that we call this a tertiary amine is uh, this nitrogen here. And amine groups come from ammonia and ammonia is an NH3 molecule, that is a nitrogen and three hydrogens. And when this gets incorporated into the molecular structure of these so-called amines, um, as these hydrogens get replaced with covalent, typically covalent chemical bonds to other atoms, typically carbon, um, you replace these with co chemical bonds to other um, atoms, um, we no longer call it ammonia, but we call it an amine. And depending on how many of these hydrogens are replaced, um, we call this different types of amine. So if you replace one of the hydrogens, that would be a primary amine. So you'd have two of the hydrogens left. And if you replace two of the hydrogens, you'd have a secondary amine. And then if all three of the hydrogens are replaced, 
you would have what's called a tertiary amine. So when we look at our molecule of amipramine here, you see that I've got the nitrogen and it is chemically bound to a methyl group here, or a CH3, a methyl group here, a CH3, and a CH2 here in this little carbon bridge that then uh, bridges it to the larger polycyclic structure up here. And so this is actually what we call a tertiary amine tricyclic antidepressant um, because all three of the hydrogens on this nitrogen have been replaced with other chemical groups. Now, that was, this is amipramine, this is a molecule of amipramine, so the original, kind of the, uh, the OG category of tricyclics belongs to the uh, tertiary amine tri TCAs. However, uh, some slight modifications to this, and you can get a different molecule. And so essentially what happens here is if I take this molecule and I demethylate it, so I remove one of these methyl groups, all right, so I demethylate it and replace one of those methyl groups with a hydrogen. And typically, uh, another thing that we see is this single covalent bond. You have a hydrogen that gets replaced on this nitrogen and you end up getting a double covalent bond between the azepine ring and the carbon bridge. And so let me go ahead and just do that. So I've got a double covalent bond there and I have demethylated the amine group down here and the resultant molecule is now what we call a secondary amine tricyclic antidepressant because I gained one of these hydrogens back but the other two hydrogens have still been replaced by chemical bonds to other groups. I still have one methyl group here and the CH2 group here on the carbon bridge. And this is actually a molecule of something called nortriptyline. So I went from amipramine and I essentially demethylated the amipramine and I have created a molecule of nortriptyline, which is the second major category of tricyclic antidepressants uh, known as the secondary amine TCAs. And the reason that I bring that this up is the side effects profile between these two major categories of TCAs tends to be a little different. So first of all, the tertiary amines like amipramine and amitriptyline and others tend to be tend to have much more pronounced anticholinergic effects. They tend to have much more pronounced alpha blocking effects as well, right? So the uh, tiredness, the tachycardia, the um, alteration in, in mental status, the postural hypotension, syncope, near syncope, all of that stuff tends to be much more pronounced with the tertiary amines. In addition to this, the tertiary amines tend to impact serotonin much more uh, than they do other neurotransmitters. They actually inhibit the reuptake of serotonin via the CERT transporter system. Um, however, the secondary amine tricyclic antidepressants like nortriptyline tend to have far less anticholinergic effects, far less alpha blocking effects, and they tend to impact the reuptake of norepinephrine. They are norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors uh, as opposed to serotonin reuptake inhibitors like the tertiary amine tricyclic antidepressants. So in general, the overall side effects profile tends to be better with the secondary amine tricyclic antidepressants as opposed to the tertiary amine tricyclic antidepressants. However, in the toxicological setting, both categories of agents are still going to be substantial sodium channel blockers. And sodium channel block A, that is directly, myo, uh, directly toxic to cardiac myocytes, right? It's going to cause uh, myocardial direct myocardial depression is going to decrease, right? It is going to decrease uh, phase zero of the cardiac action potential, right? And so it's going to widen the QRS complex out and increase. It's going to cause a wide complex tachycardia. It's going to increase the uh, risk of life-threatening dysrhythmias like torsade de pointe and others um, in both categories of agents. So the sodium channel blocking toxicity 
uh, is still going to be concern in the toxicological milieu. However, the side effects profiles under normal therapeutic conditions are going to vary between these two major categories of agents. And so it's something I thought you would all want to know, or some of you uh, might want to know a little bit more about the nuance of tricyclic antidepressants. All right, everyone, hopefully you found this video um, interesting and I'll just see you all in the next one. I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care, everyone.